Hello indie game fans, there have been a surprising number of fantastic indie games released over the years, all for the low low price of free, so here are my top 25 picks to keep you entertained without burning a hole in your pocket. Starting with Grimm's Hollow. This spooky RPG was released during the season, around Halloween last year, and is a Mario RPG style title where you explore the afterlife and search for your brother. On top of fantastic pixel art in the character portraits, the white outlines for the characters and enemies makes them stand out, and it is a fully featured RPG to boot. There are puzzles and platforming in the overworld, turn-based combat with active prompts, and a surprisingly emotional story. Multiple endings extend the life of the title if you choose to play through multiple times. Alright, listen up. I'm gonna tell you this once. The secret passage is going to take you out of a bookcase into the summer house. You're going to take a right out of the front door and knock out the guard who's smoking with the rock that you got from the pond. Then you take the key from his belt and open the door to the generator room. And you're going to want to disable the generator as fast as possible because as soon as you trip the breaker, you're going to have to deal with lasers. Free games are a fantastic way to explore genres that you don't normally play. And one common sticking point that I have seen with many people is the walking simulator. Enter Dr. Langeskov, the Tiger and the Terribly Cursed Emerald, a whirlwind heist. Despite the name that is way too long, this was directed by the creator of the Stanley Parable, where you explore the backstage area of a play which features said heist, with the trademark humour and excellence in writing. Very short as well, clocking in at about 15 to 30 minutes, so a fun little distraction and not too much of a commitment. No. They've gone too. Alright, okay, no problem. Break a leg, everybody. Positions, please. Performance 237. Beginning in 3, 2, 1. One of the earliest awesome, truly free games that I came across on Steam was Chimera Destroy All Monster Girls, a Mega Man or Shovel Knight style action platformer where you play as a Chimera with a thing like rock arm, bashing enemies and destroying bosses. In a similar vein, there is the Shovel Knight style overworld map with Mega Man like platforming culminating in the boss fight in every level, so all the expected tropes. While the pixel art isn't the greatest, the controls do feel good and for a free game, this one is certainly worth a play. If you have kids, Frog Fractions is a great way of teaching them math and fractions where you eat insects and collect apples. It's wholesome and neat, and while a little on the simpler side, does, interestingly, have upgrades for the frog as well. Here are just 10 dangers you may experience playing King Arthur's Gold. Traps, kegs, sharks, raining arrows, bison, Catapults, drowning, falling structures, fire, explosions, more explosions, and men in tight pants. Wait, uh, was that more than 10? Prior to the release of the awesome Butcher, developer Transhuman Design made the awesome pixel art siege title King Arthur's Gold, which visually looks very similar to Terraria, but with more direct multiplayer conflict. 
this has you constructing castles, traps and siege machines, all in a bid to lay waste to your opponent. It even has physics in how the projectiles fly and how water works, so quite the impressive piece of work. It supports up to 32 players in multiplayer, with recent peak populations being around 100, so it's still possible to find matches, and very fun if you can get into one. And why not Captain and Able Fleet to turn your enemy to jettison with explosive ballista bolts? The makers of Soldat bring you King Arthur's Gold. Buy it now. The only medieval building fighting chicken flying simulator. This one is perhaps targeted at a certain segment of the population, since Emily is Away is an interactive story that primarily uses an AOL instant messenger-like program to tell its tale, which, for you young whippersnappers out there, was an internet chat program that was very popular in the 90s and early 2000s. Explore the story between you and Emily over the course of 5 years through high school with its share of nostalgic sights and sounds. Student Project Atma released last year and got my attention for the beautiful pixel art, but this poignant action-adventure title tells the story of two lovers separated by death itself. Good action and wonderful art, so why not? I first came across Maelstrom when it was still in early access, but this naval-based battle royale is a nice change of pace in the crowded genre since rather than being a shooter, this has all your nautical considerations like whirlpools, leviathans and sea monsters. It is also set in a fantasy universe where dwarves, Orcs and humans have their own type of ships. Very interesting with a ton of customization options, but perhaps the player base isn't quite there for the genre, but again, a self fulfilling prophecy, so check it out if you can. Express yourself. I've got love to give. I want to sing that love. I'm a sucker for musical numbers integrated into games, and A Fair Lady is an adventure game that does it well. Set in Yorkshire with robots, on mandatory singing day, the ditties are the best part of this, so certainly worth a look. I'm the robot. This developer also went on to make the excellent Yorkshire Gubbins, so buy that as well. 
please let this end. No. Let's do another test. God damn it. Relic Hunters Zero is a bright and cartoony twin-stick shooter about our group of heroes fighting against the evil Duke Duncan as he and his army try to steal the legendary relics of power from the asteroid. Anthropomorphic space animals such as turtles and ducks are your main enemies and it is just a solid one of these with a large variety of weapons, characters and relics. A little bit rogue light in nature as well, and if you have never taken the dive on something like Isaac or Gungeon, this is one to check out. If you love exploration titles like The Curious Expedition or Renowned Explorers International Society, then be sure to check in with Pioneers. Again, due to my stupid brain, the pixel art is such a delight with an awesome use of the limited color palette as well. This is an open world, procedurally generated survival exploration game where you play as the pioneering explorer and sail the world to explore new land masses. While the history of colonialism has been brought to the forefront in more recent times, contrasting the exploitations and horrors of that with the romanticized portrayal in media, the idea of exploration and finding treasure does have its appeal. Apparently this is still in development with more content to come, but a free early access title of this quality is certainly worth a look. Of course an idol game has to make the list and my pick of the bunch still has to be Crusaders of the Lost Idols. It wasn't my first and probably won't be my last, but this party based title has a focus on formations and synergies where you need to place characters in the right spot and optimize based on equipment, gender, race and more. I had to stop since it was making me very unproductive but still on paper my most played game on Steam. RTS games can be notoriously difficult to get into, so a great way to give it a try is Air Mac Strike, which to this day, I can't believe how great it looks. It is perhaps not super beginner friendly, since on top of the general army building, you do also have control of the titular Air Mac, which is a plane that can transform into a bipedal robot. There's both the option for competitive and co-op play against AI, so a little bit friendly in that sense, but come on, just sold by the visuals alone. 
This Halloween, terror has a new game. Developer Blue Wizard Digital was created by one of the original founders of PopCap, so I always had high hopes for their titles based on the pedigree alone. One such game which got my attention in 2016, when this channel was still relatively new, was Slay Away Camp, a sliding puzzle game with a delicious horror B-movie aesthetic. Play as Skullface, the knockoff version of Jason, and his associated alternate forms and relatives as they stalk and kill teenagers. It's relatively straightforward in concept, but has some clever mechanics in the puzzles, but the campy tropes and settings in a movie format is great. So good, in fact, that the official Friday the 13th people got them to make an official version as well. But this original is still near and dear in my heart. Slay away Cam. Dwarf Fortress is a legendarily complex game that has been available for almost 15 years now with tough onboarding and no tutorials. However, the emergent stories that have come out from this are excellent with a graphically enhanced version coming to Steam soon. Hey guys, if you can, do support me on Patreon, so thank you all for the support. As covered recently, Path of Exile squeaks into the top 10, not because it's no good, but because it is stretching the definition of an indie developer based on the studio sites. However, this free-to-play action RPG is one of the best free offerings on the market right now, offering literally thousands of hours of gameplay all for free. multiple builds, time-based leaks, and ever-expanding free updates keeps things fresh, so a no-brainer as well. Rogue Light is a title that keeps popping up when talking about free games since it has been kicking around since 2014 and is pretty good indeed. This is a rogue light platformer that uses light and shadows to great effect. Your arrows are a source of light, and things get darker the further down you go, with the option to purchase upgrades when you die, so very similar to rogue legacy in some sense. If you have not checked this one out, a great one for Rogue Light fans. Developer Lunark Studios is comprised of developers with quite the impressive educational backgrounds, with their game Prismata being quite a unique combination of deck builders and RTS games. What it looks like a tabletop card game, you are actually building a cybernetic army and have to snowball your resources into an unstoppable war machine. There's a single player campaign, a story mode, ranked multiplayer, events and more, so plenty of variety, but for how cleverly designed this game is, it gets a spot on this list. As mentioned earlier, another common sticking point that I have seen are visual novel titles, so why not try Doki Doki Literature Club? Set in a Japanese high school, come to know our cast of cute anime girls as they write poems and share their opinions. 
However, do heed the warning on the store page. Similar to Chimera mentioned earlier, Super Creep Box was one of those free titles that I was thoroughly impressed with and this is an arcade high score action game where you gain points when you collect crates which randomly switches your weapon. It's a frantic scramble but the action feels great. One of the classic games in the freeware space is Cave Story by Japanese developer Pixel most often confused for Metroidvania, but in my opinion, is more of an action platformer. This has you playing as an amnesiac boy who wakes up in a cave with no memory, who then decides to help the Mimigas who are in danger from a crazy scientist. It feels great to play, with fun boss fights, characters and upgrades, so for free, why not? Do note that the publisher Nicales is pretty shady and basically screwed over the developer of the game, so please don't buy any of the other releases and get the freeware version instead. One of my favourite free games ever is Awesome Knots, which was a paid game that made the transition. This is a 3v3 action platformer MOBA, which, similar to games like Dota, has you fighting on multiple lanes, guiding creeps and destroying towers to destroy the base of your opponent. The platforming aspect makes it more accessible as compared to a Dota-like interface, but it has plenty of depth and strategy as well. So many fun characters, and this has actually quite an impressive player population for an indie game. Wow, looking back, Battle for West North has been in development since 2003, so coming to 17 years, which is an impressive piece of work. This is an open source, turn based strategy game for fans of games like Advanced Wars or Fire Emblem. It is a classic story of a young prince forced to flee his home, travelling the continent and gathering allies to reclaim his throne. This features 17 solo campaigns, multiplayer maps, community content, 7 factions and gorgeous pixel art so it should keep you occupied for hours to come. When talking about free games, every list will be incomplete without the appearance of Spelunky Classic, the original freeware version that introduced so many to the roguelite genre. Join our avid explorer as he explores the caves and underground cities for treasure. If you played the HD version, you will notice a surprising number of similarities from the enemies, shopkeeper design, biomes and so on, meaning that the classic version is a great place to start since, well, it's free. Timeless pixel art adds to the charm, but the fact that one of the best indie games of all time is free still boggles my mind.
Given the tremendous success of Undertale, developer Toby Fox did not have to do anything else, but he chose to put out Delta Rune Chapter 1 in quite a cryptic fashion on Halloween 2018. Of course, spoiler free trailer, and while it can be seen as a demo version of sorts, it is self contained and pretty good, taking the number one spot. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Check out the recommended playlist or the best pick for you, and I will see you after the jump.